Hi everyone and welcome to the Light Painting Loft of Dreams, otherwise known as my in-house calligraphy practice area. The nice guys at Light Painting Paradise asked me if I was interested in doing a tutorial for their YouTube channel uh, and I thought that probably the most useful thing I could do was a quick introduction to light painting calligraphy. Because I know that when I started, one of the things I really struggled with was creating tools that allowed me to create the sort of shapes that I was seeing from the light painting calligraphy masters like Sam Mass, uh, Cisco, people like that. And I couldn't, I tried various things and I couldn't work out how to get things that looked like I wanted. And in the end, I ended up making all sorts of monstrosities out of LEDs and bits of wire and things like that uh, to try and create the, the, the traces that I wanted in the light. But the thing is, my knowledge of electronics is terrible, uh, and these things spent 90% of their time breaking. So, in the end, I worked out how to do it using nice hard-wearing stuff that I was getting from Light Painting Paradise. So in this, what I really want to do is talk a little bit about what makes a good calligraphy tool, first of all. And then we'll move on, once we've got that idea and we know what we're trying to build, I'll show you some ways that you can use standard stuff that you might have already or you can easily get hold of to create calligraphy tools that don't require any electronics, they don't require any soldering and so they're pretty robust and they're not going to break on you. And then once we've done that, I'll do a little bit where I talk a bit about the, the basic movements of calligraphy. Uh, I'm no expert on this so you're better off following somebody who is, but I'll go a little bit into some of the shapes you can use, how I go about sort of designing things and sort of planning it out in terms of uh, positioning. and then. If I can work out how to get the various cameras and mobile phones and things to talk to each other, I'm going to try and do some live light painting ones as well, where, where you'll be able to see it build up in uh, real time, um, so that you can see how it works. Anyway, before we start that, I'll just put a couple of uh, examples into the video so you can see what it is that we're trying to do. Okay, so obviously if we're going to try and build calligraphy tools, the first thing we need to know is what makes a good calligraphy tool. And the best way to sort of get an idea of that is to have a look at what the actual people doing calligraphy on paper do and what makes it so sort of elegant. And if you look at paper calligraphy or you look at the works of people who are really good in the, the light painting calligraphy community, you'll see that what makes it different to normal stuff is that the, the light traces that you're creating change thickness as you move them. So they may start off thin and then they turn into a fat line and then they sort of fade out back into a thin line and stuff. And that produces a really elegant curve in your, your light paintings. And to do that, what you need is something that is effectively a thin line in one direction but can produce a fat line in another direction. So effectively anything that's long and thin, I mean this was an early sort of thing that I made for, for calligraphy and what it allows me to do is if I move the light in that direction I get a very thin line whereas if I move the light in that direction I get a really fat sort of stripe of light and that allows you to make the typical light painting um, sort of calligraphy shapes. The other thing you need, obviously, if you're going to be doing calligraphy, you are going to be switching this thing on and off all the time uh, during your movements. You're going to be a little drawing there, a little square here, etc. So you need something that is easy to switch on and off. Um, this one's got a button on the side, so I can just sort of tap it with a finger. But anything that allows you to switch it on and off is fine. I find side buttons are easier, but I've seen Sam Mass, who's an absolute expert at this, uh, draw some amazing calligraphy with a beer bottle and a torch with a button on the end of it. So anything's possible, but the easier it is to switch on and off, the better. Uh, what else have we got? Texture. Yeah, so if you look at um, painted calligraphy or the stuff done with inks, what you'll see is that you can change, when you're doing that, you can change how the stroke is, is looking in terms of how bright it is or sometimes its texture by putting more pressure onto the paper or reducing the pressure on the paper or indeed just letting the ink run out so it sort of fades out. So what you'll see when you look at sort of proper calligraphy as it were, <laughs> it's not really the best way to describe it, but paper calligraphy, is that there's a lot of texture in the strokes and if you look at the work of, as I say, Sam Mass 
or Cisco Light Painting, who for me are probably two of the, the best out there, or Kalam as well, um, Julian Breton. Um, there's a lot of texture in their light traces. It isn't just a solid ribbon of light. Quite often there's brighter spots in it or darker spots. And as they change direction, sometimes you'll see that it, it loses a bit of brightness or it gains a bit of brightness. And that just makes the whole thing a lot more interesting. Um, the third thing, which I think is probably important, is I tend to work, and I think most of the people that I've seen that do this, at a set of sort of different scales in terms of sizes. So I might start off doing some sort of big scale designs with something about 20 or 30 centimetres long. And then I'll drop down to something that's maybe 5 or 10 centimetres long to add a little bit more information. And then once you get down to the, the very bottom scale, maybe you'll just be using something that literally creates dots or little lines, like a little LED uh, finger light or something like that. So those are probably the main things I, I think you want. You want texture in your light trails, you want the ability to have something that changes thickness based on which direction you're going, you want to be able to have different scales in it, and it needs to be easy to switch on and off. So what we're going to do next is talk a little bit about how you might do that. Now I'm going to talk about the Light Painting Paradise system because that's what I use and I'm an ambassador for them, but most of this should be transferable if you're using your own homemade adapters or anything like that. You should be able to do something similar. So fingers crossed this will be useful. Okay, so we've talked about what makes a good light painting tool, and we've said what we need is something that's easy to control, changes its sort of size of the light trail that you get based on which direction you're going, and preferably has some texture in it. So, in terms of the controllability of the light, um, the thing that I decided to use in the end was just a torch. Uh, and I'm using the Light Painter's uh, torch from Light Painting Paradise here, mainly because it's got a side button, and that basically deals with the controllability aspect of it, because it allows me to switch it on and off if I just... Uh, put it into the right mode, I can switch it on and off with a side button. Um, and what that allows me to do is obviously switch this thing on and off as I'm actually doing the calligraphy. Once I've got it, I can just use the button, switch it on and off like that, and that's great. Equally, it's obviously got the ability to change brightness, uh, which means depending on where I am, I can adjust my calligraphy to match the surroundings a bit better. And if I want to, it's not something I do often, but you can use the strobe modes on it to get something a bit different in your calligraphy. So, that's that. Next up, I need something to connect my light source to whatever I'm going to use to do it. So here I'm using the, the all-in-one adapter from Light Painting Paradise. Again, for the simple reason that once I've stuck it on the torch, it still allows me access to the, the side button. So I've got a lot of flexibility there. And then the obvious thing to do, if we want something that basically allows us to have a thin line if we go in one direction and a fat line if we go in the other direction, it's just a sticker a rod on the end of it. So I've used one of their short plexi rods here, I think it's about 20 centimetres more or less, and with that if I switch that on I could do that and I can create the standard sort of arabesque shapes like that. Now if you do that and you stick that in, you maybe stick a colour gel or a colour filter in the thing and you go off and you draw a bit of calligraphy with it, you'll end up with something that's horrible like this. Okay, so why did that not work? We've got something here that looks like it should give you a nice arabesque line, but when you do it, if you look at it, what you'll find is that the, the shape looks really blurred, it's just not sharp. And the reason for that is because this is a thick rod, and it's basically emitting light in all directions, which means no matter where the, the camera sees it from, it's not just seeing essentially a, a really nice flat line of light, what it's seeing is something that's got depth to it. And that just sort of removes the, the sharpness from it and doesn't give you that ribbon effect that you're looking for from calligraphy. Fortunately, the solution to that is incredibly easy uh, and is simply our friend black tape. And all you need to do is basically take hold of a rod and you want to cover about three quarters of it in black tape so that you just leave a little stripe out the front and obviously that's a lot easier to see if we stick uh, a light down it so we'll we'll do that. Uh, so what I've got there is something where 90% of it's black and then there's just a small stripe out the front where the light comes up. That has several advantages. First of all, no light falls on my face. Uh, if I'm doing calligraphy with this, all of the light's going forward, none of it's going to reflect off my clothes so I'm not going to show up in the shape. So that's a good start. 
Secondly, by blocking out most of the light, what the camera sees is just a very thin strip, and that gives you a much flatter um, ribbon of light that you get out of this, rather than the sort of slightly blurry one that we got out of the, the previous rod. The third thing that's quite good about it is because we've got that, we can start adding horizontal stripes, uh, like this one that we've got here, which will then split your light trails into two, and give you, but you'll end up with them going perfectly parallel. Um, which again is something you see from written calligraphy where some of the nibs have got, uh, the, the, for the calligraphy pens, have basically got an indentation in, so you draw two or three lines at the time. Um, but effectively, if we do that, what we'll find is that you end up with a much prettier light painting trail like this. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about the basics and how you can create a nice looking light painting trail, a calligraphy style trail, using a tube on the end of a torch, just by using some black tape to basically block out the majority of it so it just leaves you with a thin strip. So let's move on to a couple of slightly more advanced things, which is like, okay, how do we create texture? Uh, in the, the traces that we want to create. So if we want something, that, you know, when I've done it with this, we've basically created a fairly flat looking trace. If we want something a bit more interesting, what we need is a way of uh, essentially having a, a single light trail which has got changes in brightness across the actual thing. Now one easy way to do that is to use the bubble rods that Light Painting Paradise provide or uh, anything like that that's got inclusions in it. So there's also uh, a spiral one, there's a couple of others. But if you do that and you put one of those into a torch, what you can hopefully see, although it's a bit difficult with a uh, video, is that there are brighter points in the, uh, in the light source there uh, where the bubbles catch the light, which means that when we move it in a standard light painting shape like that, what we'll end up with is lots of little stripes within the bigger stripes effectively so it gives texture to our shot and I'll stick an example of how that looks in a, a sort of zoomed in bit so you can see the actual uh, traces themselves here. Okay so using a bubble rod is one way that you can get interesting textures out of things. Um, another option is to create stripes in a different way so here I've got a piece of black plastic tube, nothing else, um, into which I have drilled a bunch of small holes in a line, basically. And then in the middle of that, I have put a bit of rolled up uh, baking paper, So, or uh, any form of paper, to be honest with you, you'll do, but um, baking paper is nice and thin and transparent, and we just stick that down the tube. What that means is that when I stick this into my adapter and I light it up, the only bits that glow are where the holes are, uh, and that picks up whatever light's coming down the tube, so I've got an orange filter in there in the moment, uh, which means that when I move it in a light painting shape like that, what I'll end up with is a sequence of very thin parallel lines, um, all going in the same direction, and because of the fact that when we change direction they go from being parallel to sort of all being in a line, it really shows the shape quite nicely. So that's another option, and I'll show you what that looks like over here. Okay, so black plastic tube holes in, another option. Um, another thing that I like to use, uh, and this is because it produces a really nice transparent, slightly translucent trail. I tend to use this in the background and then go over the front of it with, with other calligraphy and just use it as a sort of large scale structures thing. But it's a piece of the fat fibre optic uh, from Light Painting Paradise. When I got it, I had like a metre of the stuff and to be honest, for me, that was a bit too long. So what I did was chopped off about 20-30 centimetres of it, which made it down to a more reasonable size for what I was normally using it for, creating smoke effects and things like that, um, but also left me with a sort of 30 centimetre length of um, fibre optic. And I thought, well, how will this work? And the answer is it works really nicely. So you can just plug that into the, the adapter, stick some colour filters down it, or I tend to use it in white, actually. It comes out very nicely that way. And then just like anything else, you can use this in standard calligraphy form, so you can draw little squares like that in the shape, or you can use it like that to sort of get just flashing it on and off to get lines in your calligraphy, that works as well. I've actually taped over the end of it because if you don't, A, you get light shooting out the end of it, which sort of draws little patterns on the, the roof or the floor, 
also you get a little hot spot. Uh, and I, although I normally like that when I'm using the fiber, when I'm doing calligraphy, I don't really want a hot spot, so uh, I've taped over the end of it. So that's another option, and I'll do a quick uh, demonstration of it so you can see what I mean about the translucency, um, and put that here. So, as you can see, the options are pretty much endless in terms of how you can create texture. Anything that changes just a sort of standard, I mean this is just a sanded piece of, um, uh, of plexi rod, anything that changes the texture on the surface of this is going to reflect in the calligraphy uh, design that you do. So, for example, if you um, rough up the surface with something like a hacksaw and you do that fairly randomly, you'll get a sort of mixed texture in your in your stripes. Equally, there's nothing stopping you just sticking bits of gel on. You could colour it in with Sharpies, you could paint it with the sort of chalk paints you can get. Anything that works in normal sort of light blading or anything like that should also work on this and it's just a matter of experimenting. Now, the final thing we talked about was the idea of um, scale. So I normally work, if I'm, uh, you know, sort of uh, doing my calligraphy stuff, with something that's about that long, which is about sort of 25 to 30 centimetres long, and that's my big scale sort of, the, the overall structure. Then I tend to work with something that's a little bit smaller, so um, this bubble tube's a, a good example, it's probably 10 centimetres long in total, but the actual illuminated bit's probably about 5 or 6. Um, and then finally, you've got the detail. Now, you can use little things like finger lights for that, um, but they do tend to be, a finger light tends to be really quite small. If you want something that's a bit um, more visible, one of the things that I currently use a lot um, are the freehand tips, as they're called, from, from Light Painting Paradise. And those are basically, uh, it's a small bit of fat fibre optic with a, an adapter, which allows me to plug it into um, the all-in-one adapter as normal. And then that just allows me to have a tiny little point of light. And what I like about this is that when you're pointing it off to the side, it's not very bright. But because it's a fibre optic, if you point it directly down the lens, it's really bright. And that means that as you move it around, you get bits that change in brightness. So as you pass the lens, you get a sudden sort of glare in the middle. And that can work really quite nicely because it can sort of stand out in your image. Um, so those I like. Um, any form of LED uh, key ring light, party lights that you can get off Amazon, they all work for the sort of small scale stuff. Um, the final thing that's worth sort of just mentioning is obviously if you want to, if you want to get the, I suppose, what you'd call the, the classic calligraphy look, which is where you've got like a sort of white line on either side and then a coloured bar in the middle, um, you can do that fairly straightforwardly just by taking a rod uh, and you wrap it with a gel, like so. I mean, I'm not going to do this professionally. Just wrap it with, with an orange gel like that. Um, and then just make sure that you leave a couple of bits on either side that aren't wrapped in the gel. And then that way, if we... Uh, oh, that's not going to work because I've got a, um, an orange filter in it already. So if we take that out... Uh, um, two seconds, let's just take that out. Take the filters out. Put that back in there. Uh, then obviously what we'll get is two white stripes and an orange one down down the middle. So you can do that as well using rods without any major problem. Obviously still do the black tape, uh, otherwise you'll end up with a blurry uh, looking thing. So that's an option. And the other thing which you can do if you're using uh, tubes, something like this, and you've got the relevant things like uh, the adapters from Light Painting Paradise to attach to the top of the tubes. You can also just put a little uh, white point on the end of it and that will give you a, a blue stripe and then a sort of white bit on the end. So there's a myriad of options. Hopefully I've given you some sort of ideas of um, ways of getting that texture and that light painting looking uh, light painting calligraphy looking style basically out of existing stuff you might have knocking around or stuff that doesn't require you to do any electronics because frankly my electronics are terrible it rains all the time in England which means that when I drop it it lands in a puddle and it breaks 
and I got fed up of spending half of my time not actually making calligraphy, but resoldering things that had broken. So this is my current solution. I've also got a bunch of sort of more professional um, calligraphy tools, but obviously they, they cost a, a lot more than just sort of making stuff up yourself. So fingers crossed, it's given you some ideas. Uh, next up we'll talk a little bit about the standard light painting sort of movements. So now we've talked a little bit about how to make some tools and therefore we've got some simple tools available to us. Let's talk a little bit about the basic movements of calligraphy. Now I'm no expert at all. If you really want to know what you're doing you want to take a look at some of the stuff done by Sam Mass, by Cisco, um, there's a guy called Julian Breton, goes under the name of Kalam, who is both a, um, a light painter on paper and a light painter, uh, sorry, a calligrapher on paper and a calligrapher who does light painting and his stuff's phenomenal. Um, Fella Malou does some amazing work, Dillis, Stabu Light, there's a bunch of them out there who are way better than me, um, but I can give you some stuff. The other thing is, unfortunately, there is no secret to this, it just comes down to practice, a bit of spatial awareness, and just repeating things until you get it into muscle memory. Um, However, let's start with the basics. The basic light painting shape is basically the one that starts as a thin line, turns into a fat line, and goes into a thin line again. So it's a sort of S shape, generally referred to as an arabesque. So what we do is we start off with our light painting tool at about 45 degrees. We move the light in the direction of the tube. So it stays as a thin line, so we just go like that. And that way we're basically creating a thin line that way. And then once we've done enough, we move at 90 degrees so that we're creating a nice fat line, back to a thin line again, and stop. And hey presto, we've got something that's thin at the bottom, fat in the middle, thin at the end, and that's your basic arabesque. Now obviously we can do those at different scales, so I could do a small one, and then I could do a much bigger one round it, so that the two sort of connect up together, and then I could add another one uh, in the middle if I wanted. Or you can also change the sharpness, I suppose. What I've done there have been very smooth curves like that, so that's going to create much of a sort of serpentine S shape. However, if you instead go straight line, cross, straight line, so you're not doing a curve but you're doing it in straight lines, obviously that'll be much more jagged, it'll be much more binary, you'll sort of, it looks uh, less organic and more man made. Um, so that's that. You can obviously also do the shape in any direction you want. I've shown those going vertically, but you could start, if you wanted to go horizontally, you can move it that way, back down, and create a shape like that. And then you can join on other ones. So if you then remember that you created the shape like so, then the middle of your shape is there, so you can start another one, join that on, middle of your shape, like so. And you can end up adding more and more and hooking them all together. So those are the basics of the light painting shapes. You can also do things that change in thickness. So if we move the light that way, obviously we're creating a thick line. If whilst we're moving it, we also rotate it, then it goes from a thick line over here to a thin line over there. So you can use that for things where you sort of bring it um, up to a point and that will sort of create you just nice sort of shapes that, that gradually taper off in thickness until they're a sort of line up at the top. So those are the basics of light painting sh shapes and now we'll talk a little bit about positioning. So in terms of positioning and design what I tend to do is two things. First of all I have a little square of luminous tape and I put that down on, in the scene, normally hidden behind a rock or something like that, so that I know where my centre point is. And that means that if I go over here, doing some light painting, doing some, adding some calligraphy traces, I can always come back and know exactly where the middle of my calligraphy design is. And that allows me to work on the symmetry a lot easier. And in terms of thinking, then what I do is I, I always consider a centre point, and I have that in my mind. And that's the vertical centre point. But you can also use so divide the space vertically using various reference points. So, for example, you could use your shoulder line as one reference point. Where are your hips? You know approximately where those are, so that can be a, a second 
uh, reference point. Or sometimes what I'll do is, is think, well, okay, that's as high as I can draw because it's as long as my arm is. I know where the floor is, and therefore the middle must be about sort of here. So, you know, so belly button height is sort of the middle of my, my picture. And then that allows me to divide up the space into four or six or sometimes eight, depending on how I'm, I'm thinking of it, different squares. And for me, if I'm working symmetrically, that's really useful because it allows me to think, well, okay, if I draw this square like that, then the other square needs to be like that. Um, equally, you can then use that to sort of um, just give yourself guidance as to where you're going to draw. So, you know, I can think, well, okay, I'm going to start off on this side of the line and I'm going to end up on that side of the line. And then if I want it symmetrically, well, I just need to start off on this side of the line and end up on that side of the line. Drawing in the opposite direction is a nightmare, by the way. It's a nightmare for everybody. You either have to learn to use your left hand, which is tricky, or you have to sort of do it at a slightly odd angle, and it's never as easy going left-handed as it is going right-handed. Um, it's just something you have to practice, unfortunately. Um, so those really are the basics of it. Oh, oh, one other thing, obviously, we've talked about arabesque shapes. Obviously, you can also just do straight lines and you can do little sort of squares. So if you just start there and you do that, that just generates you a little square of light at, a, at an angle, so it's a sort of rhombus, or obviously if you did it like that, you would get an actual square. So that's all possible. You can put little flashes in if you just want like little lines, obviously all that kind of stuff is possible. And then normally once I've done the basics, I'll swap over uh, to one of the little freehand tips and because I know where the centre point of my design is, I can then start adding little flashes of light, or I can add um, sort of spirals along those lines down the centre. Uh, so there's all sorts of options once you've got the basics of that's my centre point and I'm, I'm working out from it. Um, recommend, as I say, one thing I would definitely recommend is a French calligrapher called Coffee Owner, um, who does painting on canvas and on walls and he's amazing um, and he's got a bunch of videos on his Instagram and on his Facebook feed where he shows parts of drawing big canvases and I found that incredibly useful because by looking at how he was using a physical pen it gave me a very good idea of the sort of angles that I should be holding my light painting tools and the sort of movements that he was using and how it all connected together to give the shapes that he was drawing. So highly recommended. I'm going to try and leave some links um, after the video which people can follow to see some of these guys I've mentioned like Sam and Cisco uh, to see their stuff.